This is the Galaxy A23. It's the second A-series Samsung has dropped this year. I think it's actually closer in features and design to the Galaxy A53. From the specs I've seen, the A23 is actually lacking. And it got me wondering what makes this device actually special. My name is Cypher and this is my review for the Galaxy A23. Before I go further, let's start with unboxing. Now, back to the review. There are some similarities to the design of the A53 and the A23, like the rounded edges and the square camera bump on the back. Also, a bezel and a notch that are perfectly reasonable for a budget device. The phone has quite some curves, but even so, it's not slippery and it feels secure in the hand. This phone is almost entirely made of plastic, it's less premium than the A53, but it's also less likely to dent or shatter because of its plastic body. The only thing I don't like about the A23 is the plastic back. Believe me, it's a fingerprint magnet. Speaking of fingerprints, the power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner. It's quite fast and accurate. On the left hand side of the phone, you find the SIM and memory card slot. Just in case the 64GB or the 1-8 to storage isn't enough for you. For display, the Galaxy A23 comes with a lesser but brighter panel. It features a 6.4 inch HD TFT screen with full HD resolution. It also comes with 90Hz refresh rate, same as last year, and an IP67 rating for dust and water resistance. Also, the A23 doesn't have a proper light sensor or a proper proximity sensor. This means if you're using your phone under the sun, you have to manually increase your screen brightness. Other than that, the 6.4 inches TFT panel has a great overall performance. It has very good color accuracy. For the camera, there are some major improvements. The A23 features a quad-core camera setup which is 50 megapixel wide, 5 megapixel ultra wide, 2 megapixel depth, and 2 megapixel macro. For the selfie cam, it comes with an 8 megapixel front camera. I took some pictures with the device and the colors look nice and natural. The A23 has a single speaker at the bottom, and it sounds quite average. I think the A23's strength lies in its battery life. It can go a full day with heavy usage, which is great, I must say, thanks to the huge 5000mAh battery and the chipset. As for charging, it wasn't that much impressive. It took 2 hours 20 minutes to charge fully. The Galaxy A23 comes with a Snapdragon 680 chipset and Adreno 610 GPU. The chipset provides a smooth experience with minimal stutters and slowdowns when you use it day to day. 
However, if you want the best performance on a tight budget and you are a fan of gaming, there are much better options out there. For the OS, it comes with Android 12, One UI 4.1, and you will get three years software updates and five years security patches. My final verdict for this device is that I think Samsung did a lot of good things from the camera to the battery life, but there are a lot of letdown for this device. For example, the TFT screen. I don't think it's a good upgrade. How can the TFT2 have an AMOLED screen and this device has a TFT screen? Plus, there are a lot of devices out there with the same price point, but with better features. I wouldn't say this is a bad device, but I don't think it's a good upgrade. So that's my review on this device. If you find it helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and even drop a comment and tell me what you think. So till next time, bye guys.